Hello and welcome. My name is Marcos and this is Self Psychology. This is our ninth video, our ninth segment. I hope you guys have been taking my advice to live healthy and happier lives. But I know that some of you haven't, so that's why I continue to come to you every week. This week's segment is going to be a little special. It's going to be special because I'm targeting a smaller group of people. In my practice, I've noticed an increase in this phenomenon where women become addicted to men. And it's quite disturbing. So I felt it my responsibility to talk to you about it this week. I understand how this segment could be offensive. Offensive to some women and some men alike. But it's the best way I know how to get this issue across and to see if how I can help uh, these women stop disturbing themselves. So let's begin by identifying the problem. The problem is that women, if they think they fall in love with this man. The relationship goes really well for about one year to three months to one year and a half. After which the man starts losing interest in the woman. Now he shows this by becoming more busy, spending more time with friends, spending more time with family, not calling as much, not texting, not being interested in the woman, not being affectionate, not being very sexual. Now the woman responds to this by getting jealous. She starts thinking there may be someone else. So she starts uh, looking through phone records, looking through websites to see if she sees uh, him um, stalking him. She starts talking to her friends about the situation, keeping it fresh in her mind and obsessing. Then she starts to argue with the man and claim and claim what is it that he's doing. Why is he pushing away? Why is he not affectionate and why is he not sexual? This pushes the man further away and he calls less and less emails, texts, less and less. And again, like I said, the woman continues to obsess, keeping it fresh by talking to her friends and family about the situation. This is the scenario. Then, out of the blue, the man calls one night when he's out drinking with his friends. And the woman allows him uh, to come over and spend the night. They have a very enjoyable evening. Then the man disappears again. The woman felt, well, she can change him this time. or well, this time it'll be different. But the cycle continues, and she continues to disturb herself. Some of the other thoughts that the woman has is that she starts making excuses like he's out with his friends he's spending more time with family he's spending more time with his children he's flawed like everyone else like all everyone else next time I'm sure he will see how special I am the woman in turn she stops she doesn't stop because she never started, but uh, she doesn't date. She doesn't put herself out there to see if she can meet another man. So what is it that she's doing? She's waiting for him to come back to her. She continues to wait for the man, sitting by the phone, not literally, but expecting his phone calls, emails, texts. It's kind of on a waiting mode and she does not date. She continues to obsess about him and think how and believing that somehow he'll come back to her. She'll continue to obsess and depress herself, making herself unable to function, sometimes not even able to go to work. And this continues to perpetuate bad decisions that she makes about the relationship. Now, I purposely do not talk about this in reference to a man, but it could be vice versa. 
And it could uh, go on, this phenomenon, in gay relationships as well. But the fact is, is that I mostly see it in women. And that's why we're discussing this in that reference today. Now, why do I call this an, ad an addiction instead of love? Well, in love there's no opposite. There's really no hate. In addictions there is. And this is very much an addiction because the women will tell you themselves that they know this relationship is bad for them. Their family and friends know that this relationship is bad for them. However, they can't see themselves not being involved in some way with this person. And also, it's very much a, a, like an addiction because it's very pleasurable when the woman has the man, when he is spending the night, when he is uh, giving her attention. However, eventually, that pleasure crashes. The man disappears and the woman crashes and disturbs herself, having these very high destructive emotional reactions. So why does this happen? Well remember our discussion a couple segments ago on schemas? Where, where we're growing up, we're learning these, we're receiving these messages which eventually creates our schema, our small personality. Then when that schema is activated, like in this case, we start to see everything through that lens. So in this case, some of the messages that we may receive, that women may receive, are that women are supposed to keep families, marriages, and relationships together. They're supposed to be responsible for taking care of the man, for fixing the man. When he is ill, vulnerable, or even thinking wrong. Women are mothers. And many times they think of self, themselves as taking over the mother role of the man. Women are supposed to be nurturing. It's their responsibility to nurture a man, regardless of what they may be doing. Women are not complete without a man. And this makes them inadequate. Women's self-worth are defined by men. And even in some cultures, like in mine, women who don't marry, there's actually a name for them. So the society, the culture, our upbringing, perpetuates what is it that women think when they get, when they become older and they have these relationships. So if they develop this schema, now they're looking at this relationship through the eyes, through the lens of this schema. And that's what's wrong with this picture. That's how they disturb themselves. Again, so the woman looks at this through the lens of this schema, of dependence. She feels she cannot live alone. So how do we look at this phenomenon from the ABC perspective? The first thing we identify in many cases, is the C, the emotion. What are some of the emotions that come up for some of these women? Women feel they are out of control. They're crying, they're obsessing, they're calling, they're texting, they're yelling, they're depressed, they're angry, they're stalking, and they're hurt. This is emotional, this is the emotional and the behavior. This is the C. Now the A, the activating event, what starts this up? Well, it could be simply that the man did not return a phone call. Or it can be that she feels alone and she starts obsessing about the man. Whatever the case may be, she starts becoming jealous and that can also be a trigger. The B is where we have to focus on the beliefs. What is it that she's telling herself? The most common belief I've seen is a belief of inadequacy. I am worthless. 
I am hopeless. I hate myself. What is wrong with me? I am out of control. My life is horrible. I can't be without him. What is wrong with me? That he has to be with other women. I am ugly, skinny, fat, unattractive. It is hopeless. I will never get over it. These are some of the core irrational beliefs. And all of these irrational beliefs are false. And they lead to depression. They are lies that women tell themselves. So that's the scenario. You have a woman who's been with this man for a year and three months, year and a half. And he starts to pull away. The woman feels through her schema that she's unable to live without him. She obsesses and she's hurt. She continues to become jealous, rageful, fight, and he continues to pull away. Periodically, he'll show up, they'll have a good evening together, and he'll disappear again. This leaves the woman waiting for him, his phone calls, his texts, his messages, to come back, always hoping that the next time will be different. Went over the A, B, and C. The A could be any number of triggers from not returning a phone call to obsessing to feeling jealous, whatever the case is. The C is the emotion. Feelings of hurt, rage, anger, depression. And the behavior is continual obsession, talking to family members, talking to friends, keeping it fresh, keeping it alive. The B are the beliefs of inadequacy, self-downing, feeling of, of worthless, feeling hopeless. That is the, basically the general situation. Now what can women do to help themselves? The first thing is to get out of the crisis. First thing women have to do when in a crisis is get out of the crisis. How do they do that? First of all, they must practice. It's sort of like golf. You practice your swing, so when you get to the game, you're better at it. Okay? And the first thing women have to understand is that a crisis is in three stages. First of all, there's the crisis, when you're crying, obsessing, and you, out of, you feel out of control. Second stage is a space and time that you have to produce. And third is a breathing exercise. Now, let's go through the stages again. So the woman is in a crisis, crying her. She's practiced this. So she understands that stage two is a space and time. How can she create this space and time? There are different ways. One way that I've seen to work is that women could flash a big stop sign in front of them mentally and that would say stop okay let's create a space and time or they may think of something calming something beautiful to them a vacation spot something very calming to them they think about this and that creates a space and time once they've calmed themselves down to have this space and time to stop this obsessing to stop this crying and this hurt then they can move on to a practice breathing exercise. Now one of my good friends, Melissa Hale, a renowned yoga, explains how women can uh, uh, do this breathing exercise. Now this is for calming uh, a woman in crisis. It's basically a left nostril breathing exercise. And the woman will practice this for three minutes per day for 40 days. Now why do I say that? Three minutes is usually enough to calm someone down. And 40 days is what it usually takes for someone to create a new habit. So how does this see look? Well, the woman is in a crisis. She's crying um, and hurt. She creates the space and time by flashing a stop sign in front of her face. Then she sits down in this place that she has already been to 
same place, same, same time every day. She's been to this place to practice her breathing exercise. She covers up her right nostril and she breathes for three minutes through her left nostril. That will produce her to calm down, to stop hyper hyperventilating and get a hold of herself. This is what she needs to do to start thinking rationally. Because the next step is that she's going to have to dispute those irrational beliefs of worthlessness. So as I said, the next step would be for her to dispute. Now, I'm not going to go through it in this video because we've went through this in the previous two videos. Okay? This boils down to unconditional self-acceptance. The woman is not accepting herself unconditionally because she is not realizing, she's telling herself lies, she's not realizing that she is able to stand it. She's able to go through what difficulty it may be to get over this situation, to get over this relationship. She tells herself she can't stand it. She tells herself she is worthless, which are all lies, and they need to be disputed. So what she would have to do is go through the previous two um, video segments to see how she can get this unconditional self-acceptance because she needs to control herself so she can live a healthier and happier life. One thing she must be clear about is the unconditional self-acceptance, I'm sorry, the unconditional other acceptance. She has to be aware that under no circumstance she can control any other human being, including this man. I'd like to wrap up with a very quick example so you can see more or less how this plays out. Again, we have a woman that's called Linda. And Linda is a, is a Spanish woman, so she's been raised in a culture that feeds her these messages of being secondary to a man. So she meets this man and after a year and three months he starts pulling away. He starts um, not calling. He starts not emailing. His distance starts to um, enter the relationship and he starts returning her calls every two or three days. She starts becoming jealous and she starts looking through phone records, searching the websites, calling him obsessively, crying, talking to friends about the situation, and keeping the relationship fresh in her mind. While the man is out, not really paying very much attention to the relationship. Then one evening, the man is out drinking with his friends. He calls her up and she invites him over. They have a wonderful evening together and he leaves. He promises to call her and he doesn't. A week passes and he still doesn't call. She gets jealous, continues to obsess, cry and hurt. She notices that this is a cycle. So what Linda says is that she's going to help herself. She realizes that she feels uh, inferior to this man and that he's, he's idolized. So she starts to prepare herself for the next crisis. And she does this by telling herself, okay, when it, whenever this crisis happens again, I know it's a three-stage process. I'm gonna think about my hometown in Puerto Rico where everything is nice and calm. Once I create that space, I'm going to do my left nostril breathing for three minutes. That'll calm me down enough to do the ABCs, dispute this worthless feeling I have of myself, and come up with an alternative belief. Come up with something new to do, some new action, so I can know that I can stand this, get stronger, and make the choices I need to make. So Linda practices this. 
A week later, the man calls, spends the night again. Linda feels very nice, very uh, euphoric, and then the man leaves and doesn't call again. She falls into this crisis and she goes through her stages. She's able to dispute her feelings of self-worth and start accepting herself unconditionally. Once she starts accepting herself unconditionally, she starts accepting him unconditionally. And she starts realizing that she cannot control someone else. She can only control her own behavior. And what she does with this is that she grows and she's able to do other things with her life. I hope this video was helpful to all of you, not just women. I'll see you here next week. Live healthy and live happy.